Hello guys, welcome back to 157, in which today we'll be talking about Rogue One, a bold, beautiful, yet bullheaded movie. To start off, this is like my third Star Wars movie ever. I don't know anything of its lore or anything else connected to that matter. I came into this movie with rather low expectations, and here are my thoughts of the movie. While the first 20 minutes aren't the most glorious 20, the movie starts in somewhat disconnected pieces of exposition, rushing and rushing as it goes along. You have to struggle to follow. It just makes you, like, backstory here, character instruction there. Just more and more exposition, it has no connection, no flow. It honestly gave me the worst impression of this movie. But by the first fight scene, it begins to find its pace and footing and lets a tad bit more story settle in naturally. Yeah, but to say it bluntly, I did not enjoy the first 20 minutes. Story, I can only describe it as intermittent with its quality and depth. It does the stakes right. You can watch my video, I just talk like a full 9 minutes about stakes. And just the same way, it does the same problem I was talking about in that episode. It gives you the stakes, but you don't care about the actual what's at risk, and that's the characters in this case. And the characters, I don't remember any of their names, I swear. And it's such a shame, especially with something as Star Wars, which is just vast planets and galaxies of different kinds of breeds and races and different kinds of people, religions, anything of that sort, and they get the most interesting individuals together and it's like I thought that was what it was gonna be its kind of pivotal point in quality of this movie. I thought this movie would focus more on character. This is what the marketing was doing. It showed the diversity of the cast and just every character and their personality but in the movie itself it does not establish any of this. Yes the first even the first 20 minutes have the backstory of the protagonist but it doesn't matter, there is no actual unique emotion elicited from this character. We cannot sympathize with this character, nonetheless with anyone else in this movie. And that kind of brings me back to what this movie's biggest problem is. It goes too fast, it doesn't let anything, by that I almost mean anything, I can't say a single thing, it doesn't give it any life, it doesn't bake it in. But now let's talk more story. And here's something that I found so much love in, and that's the power struggle here. Simple humans, not some force-wielding superheroes, take it against an entire Imperial army just to recover some plans. And this does so much for the movie. It's just normal people like you and I trying to do something for what they believe in. When we have smaller victories, it makes it more powerful on a smaller scale in this case. And because sometimes if you want to take a move forward in the story, you have to take a step backwards and look at the smaller people. And I love that smaller scale here. It works so much in favor for the entire movie and actually this entire series. It feels more intense and impactful too when something comes to rise. It gives it a more human feel, but sadly, the characters themselves don't feel human. But now I want to talk more feeling, because this movie has quite a unique feeling when you watch it, compared to other Star Wars movies. This is more grounded, this is more down to earth, and this is what I liked. It shows that Star Wars is showing different colors, and shows they can aim for more diversity in their styles and still achieve some sort of quality and entertainment in it. And don't get me wrong, this movie is down to earth, but it has a lot of adventure. But it's more angled to each singular location, and which and with such beautiful and lovely locations, who couldn't complain really? And this is what I want to talk about. This is what made me. This is probably the most incredible part about this movie. The environments, they're incredible. It just makes me more and more surprised at how much technological progress our generation has made in the past few years in the realm of visual arts. They have as much variety as they do in beauty from the deep, treacherous lava planets to serene, tropical biomes. And you can sense the depth and scale with every shot. It's just so 
refreshing and overwhelming every single time, from the towering ships of the Republic to the scaling oceans of each natural planet. These are glaring examples of what environment should be, and this can be provided as such a strong example. They vary in size and color, and massive and small, and they feel all alive. And these are what environment should be, just alive. And this beauty can go alongside with the cinematography. In itself, it's beautiful as it is controlled and tempered. Not once did I ever feel jarred in any action sequence, let alone any, just any shot in this movie. Each moment felt right, and take any frame from this movie and you can post it on your wall. The cinematography is smart, beautiful, and just well thought out. And visually, this movie is astounding in every sense. Now, the ending. Okay, don't worry, I'm not gonna spoil it. Because the ending, the climax of the resolution, is without a doubt, like, the best part of the movie. And it's incredible in a way. The beginning set me off so much, and then halfway through the movie, the action sequences kind of let me that sense that there's still hope for this movie. And on and on and on it went, and it began to find more and more pace. It began to build up to this. And this is not what I expected from a Star Wars movie at all. Because it really does show its sure colors and it just really shines here. This is the movie we wanted to see and it's finally giving it to us. And there are moments that make you gasp and put you on edge. They have those high flying space battles that everyone just so loves and now they have these shootouts on the beach planet, oh my gosh, it's just incredible. I honestly haven't felt this way in an action scene for a while. And this is, ironically enough, the part where all the character development comes into play. We don't develop the characters as much as we should, but we know enough about them just to care a little bit about them. And that's good enough for me because, trust me, this movie wants to let you know, just like in my video, that they can kill off anyone they want. And it's great. Now let me jump to the last five minutes, because those are abrupt. This ending for the movie is very abrupt because it ties into, you know, the first Star Wars movie ever. But on its part, it should do its job to give a close, just a nice polite close, but it doesn't do that, no. It just hitches off the first Star Wars, and I don't know how to feel about that. It contributes to the movie, and it contributes to the series. It doesn't contribute to the audience, though. <laughs> Alright, to tie it off, I enjoyed Rogue One despite all its flaws, and it's coming that it's one of my first Star Wars movies ever, and if it's going to set the tone for future Star Wars movies, then count me in. This was an incredible movie, unique in every way. The visuals were gorgeous. The story was great. The characters, not so much. Nothing else really struck me. But, but how about you guys? Because honestly, I, this is... I find this movie for an audience that can accept a dark tone and a cast of bland characters, but can appreciate the beauty of its action, its boldness, its visual, and its score. The tone is different, new, darker. I never got to talk about that. The tone for this movie, especially the ending, is incredibly dark, and I loved it. The tone is without a doubt going to be controversial amongst regular moviegoers and Star Wars fans, but to say the least, I think it brings a lot more to the table for the entire Star Wars series itself than The Force Awakens did. And in closing, Rogue One, despite its numerous flaws in character, story, and other essential cinematic components, it still manages to hold itself against its massive hype and amongst the sea of cinematic failures this year. And it's just an all-around good movie. And that ends, well, my first review of a movie ever, which turns out 
Strangely enough to be a Star Wars movie, I never expected that to happen. Thank you guys so much for joining me, and yes, I really highly recommend watching Rogue One. It's a great movie, a bit, yeah, actually not a bit, just has a strong dark tone. It's very different. If you guys want to try something new, a different kind of action movie, I highly recommend Rogue One. Thank you guys. Bye.